So, uh, hello uh, world, hello Django Knots, hello netizens. Um, yeah, I'm here to talk about uh, fetching uh, data from APIs using Django and GraphQL without hitting rate limits. It's a pretty long title. It's my first um, uh, international talk, so I may uh, have to work on titles more. Uh, so, uh, I'm Manishuni Das, and I'm a student from um, Computer Science and Engineering from College of Engineering and Technology, Bhubaneswar, Odisha, India. Uh, so uh, this is a project that I developed as a part of my RPG internship with Open Humans Foundation in 2018. Um, so Open Humans Platform provides a, a single platform for all the users to store their data, uh, including Ancestry DNA, 23andMe, Fitbit, all of that. So my project proposal included uh, including um, GitHub and Twitter data sources to open humans. So uh, before moving on to that, I would like to uh, say who am I. Uh, so I'm a student. Uh, I'm uh, almost a graduate. I'm almost there. But since I, I haven't received my degree yet, so I'm still an undergraduate. Uh, I'm from. Uh, I'm also a Processing Foundation Fellow 2019. That's going on now and um, a Girls Group Summer of Code mentor and an RPG 2018 alumni as well. Yeah, so uh, I had the liberty to choose uh, APIs, to choose data sources. So uh, why did I choose GitHub API and Twitter API is uh, due to the fact that uh, GitHub API, the data is already sorted and organized and which makes it an excellent source for visualization. When you see all those green color you know, contributions, uh, it gives you an inspiration to work more and to work for that uh, darkest green in your uh, profile. Um, then we have meticulous information regarding pull requests, issues, activities, repositories. So yeah, that's just a meticulous whole lot of data that you would like to see in your own Open Humans uh, account. Um, yeah, so moving on. Uh, so uh, I mentioned uh, without hitting rate limits, so I need to cover what rate limits is all about. So it is like uh, the amount of traffic outgoing and incoming to a particular network or a particular API. So. Uh, yeah, so that's what rate limits are. So uh, you may have come across these requests, like uh, it has already hit the rate limits. GitHub API has 5,000 requests per minute. A Twitter API has 600, uh, 60 requests per minute, so that is uh, rate limits. Uh, uh, it ensures better flow of data and increases uh, security and uh, makes sure uh, that you don't uh, you know, fetch a lot of data and that is not uh, visible or not, you know, not able to organize, uh, very difficult to maintain. So, uh, yeah, so it increases uh, security in the way that it uh, prevents DDoS attacks, that is, distributed denial of service attack, that is not really for, uh, like, uh, it doesn't really pose a risk to the uh, security risk, but it renders a website or an online business inaccessible, so it's, it's dangerous. Um, it prevents users from making an attempt to load tons of information. I covered that before, so, yeah. Moving on, uh, these are some of the challenges that I faced uh, while working with GitHub API. Uh, it uses rate limits, so I had to respect that uh, and uh, take care that if I fetch a lot of data, that will not lead to a lot of data, but it will lead to a lot of errors. So uh, moving on, we have uh, fetching data from a GitHub takes time, not because of the rate limits, but it can be a lot of data, depending upon your number of contributions. Um, we want to regularly update data and take into account data we already did upload to Open Humans. Yeah, Open Humans uh, has this uh, ability to you know um, update the data that we already have since uh, you don't uh, like uh, stop contributing. You just keep adding to your contribution. So yeah, it helps to update your data as well. Uh, so, uh, so for rate limiting, I used salary and requests respectful. Uh, for Celery, it's a simple, flexible, reliable distributed system to provide a vast amount of requests. So uh, it, is, uh, it helped me a real lot in rate limiting. Apart from that, we also, have, uh, we also used a request respectful, which is a minimalist wrapper uh, on requests to you know, respect the rate limits. Uh, it also helps to scale out a single thread, a uh, single process, or even a single machine. It also proxies HTTP requests. Um, for small code changes, and it uh, works with Python 2 and Python 3 as well. You, if you want to check, you, uh, check it out, it is, uh, the link is in the description, like uh, github.com slash serpentai slash request restrictful. You can just uh, have a look there. Uh, so uh, I used GraphQL, so it was also upon me. I faced a lot of issues with uh, REST APIs while 
um, REST API as well, fetching data, because uh, uh, I had to fetch data from a number of APIs, from multiple APIs, so there was a risk of hitting rate limits. Uh, so I uh, shifted to GraphQL. GraphQL is an open source uh, server-side runtime specification developed by Facebook. And uh, it is, uh, as the name suggests, it's QL, which is a query language uh, to fetch uh, uh, and mutate, query fetch and mutate uh, data from data sources. This is the logo for you. Yeah. Uh, why GraphQL? Uh, yeah, there are some reasons why I changed to GraphQL. Uh, the first reason being versioning. Uh, REST APIs have a lot of versions. Uh, uh, taking into account GitHub API, uh, REST APIs versions are version 1, 2, and 3. But uh, in GraphQL, there is a single version. If there is any updates, that is to the single version itself. So uh, it makes that version, uh, versioning thing really uh, you know, handy. Uh, apart from that, we have uh, asked for what you need. Yeah, uh, the whatever you ask for, um, uh, like, uh, there is a specific format which is very similar to the JSON format. If you are asking something and you don't want anything more or less than that, so this is like a very to the point and concise, uh, concise way to fetch data. Uh, I don't know whether I can show you a demo here. Um, let me see. Yeah, I can, I think. Oops, I can't. Okay, it's fine. Oh, uh, um, yeah, uh, I would like to show the net the screen. Okay, so uh, this is the demo. This is the version 4 of GraphQL API. It has Explorer available to us. Um, you can see that uh, this is the query on one side and this is uh, the response on the other side. Uh, whatever you ask for, uh, like a name with owner, stargazer, sparks, it just shows the exact data, which is very similar to the query, so you can easily correlate. If you, uh, the best thing about explorers is that um, uh, the thing is, uh, you can um, easily predict what will be your next node or what will be your next edge by simply clicking on control space. Uh, so that's the best part about uh, GitHub GraphQL API or version 4. Um, I don't know whether I can. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this was the demo. Then we have uh, get many APIs response in a single request. So that helped me a lot. That helped me not, uh, not uh, hitting rate limits and um, you know, stitching a number of uh, REST APIs and getting a single response out of that. Because GraphQL provides a schema stitching, which is uh, really essential for uh, querying from multiple REST APIs. Uh, this is how GraphQL work, uh, works. Uh, it has uh, the client uh, can work and operate via uh, you know, any computer or any, any device. Then it sends a request to the GraphQL, then GraphQL uh, can fetch data from legacy systems, microservices, or third-party APIs, and then produce you a single response. So, yeah, uh, this is OAuth. I know uh, all of you know OAuth, right? You have heard about OAuth, I think. How many of you know about OAuth? Uh, that's pretty a lot of people. But since this talk is for uh, intermediate as well as beginners, so I would like to cover what it is. Uh, we have almost come across this thing like uh, uh, sometimes ESPN asks to you know log in with GitHub and then you are uh, uh, sorry ESPN asks uh, whether you can log in with you know um, Facebook. So um, you get uh, to log in with Facebook without even entering your password. So that is what OAuth is all about. Um, so uh, this is how pretty much how OAuth works. Uh, first, an authorization request is sent, then um, the resource owner sends uh, an authorization grant, then the client sends an authorization grant to the authorization server, and then um, the authorization server uh, returns an access token, um, and the access token is then returned to the resource server, and then the protected resource is sold to the client. So that is pretty, uh, pretty much how OAuth works. Uh, yeah. Uh, this is the workflow that I followed in my project. Uh, that is, first, the user goes to the website provided by this repo, then uh, authorizes uh, with Open Humans. You can also authorize with a Google account, so that is another OAuth authentication taking place there. Then we have a uh, redirect to the GitHub uh, page. Uh, then uh, you have to authorize with GitHub. That is, again, login with GitHub. And then uh, GitHub data is available as a, a file, as a JSON file. You can easily download that. and. Yeah, you can al always click on the update button and get regular updates of your own data that is in JSON format. 
So demo time, uh, you can find uh, this work in uh, this link. This is uh, there. Uh, Manishuni Das says uh, what OGitHub source, so you can go there and check. Uh, so this is the video. Uh, actually, uh, the thing is, um, I was trying to uh, run it in my own computer, but uh, there was some issue, and it suddenly stopped working. You, you can relate to me, right? Uh, yeah. So, uh, so I had I somewhat managed to uh, take uh, you know a screen recording of that. So I'd like to play it. Oh, sorry. Oh my God. Um, I think it's not playing. Yeah, so first, um, first you have to uh, start the server, which is uh, by, by typing Heroku local in your terminal or going to uh, manage that by run server. And then you have uh, this app running at localhost 5000. Yeah, so just go on to localhost 5000, then you have this uh, home screen, which helps you integrate your GitHub account to OpenHumans, and this is the home page. So you have to click on start with OpenHumans authorization. Um, yeah, uh, then it directly leads to this page, but actually it uh, skipped the award part. You can sign in and si uh, sign up at the you know first thing. Then uh, yeah, so this is authorized GitHub data upload. Then you have to authorize this app by clicking on authorize project. Then out. Yeah, so uh, this leads to the. Uh, redirect page that is uh, for logging in into GitHub, and then, yeah, you have to log in into GitHub. At first, your data may not be visible, uh, but uh, when you reload this, your data will be visible. Yeah, you can all see your data and uh, in the terminal as well, like this. How lot of data? Uh, it's in JSON format, so yeah, uh, just reload it, and we get download GitHub data. So uh, when you click on download, you have that file available in your local system. Yeah, so again, that's a uh, pretty lot of data. All of the data will be as available. Yeah, say, uh, so that's how I fetched data from, uh, uh, from GitHub API and made it visible to the OpenHumans platform. <coughs> this data will be visible in your OpenHumans account as well. I think it's still loading. Um. Um, it's boring. Uh, okay, we'll switch to the next slide. So uh, this is all I had to say. Uh, uh, very, uh, uh, I extend my heartfelt gratitude to DjangoCon Europe for organizing this awesome conference and having me speak uh, my work out. And um, I also uh, have to uh, give a huge shout out to Outreachy for giving me an opportunity to work with the Open Humans Organization. I would li also like to thank my mentor, Mike Escalante, Bastian, and Matt Price Ball for extending me the help and support. And um, Apart from that, I'm very grateful to my parents and my friends for uh, helping me reach where I am today. So uh, that's all I had to say. Thank you. It was awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, so we have a few minutes for uh, some questions. Uh, again, we are using DjangoCon QA online, and you can also um, come up present um, in, in the center if you are in the auditorium.
Any questions? I know it's already lunchtime, but yeah, we can answer questions. Oh, I have one there question. Um, did you use the actual, was it only a, a test, or did you actually use the GitHub data? Uh, I, I, did, I did use GitHub data. For what? Like uh, for? For what? Like, wha for, no, uh, I mean, what, what did you do with it? Like, wha was uh, it just It just a gets test? uploaded to the Open Humans platform, and your data is visible, like, uh, along with the other data sources that Open Humans provides, such as 23andMe, um, and uh, ancestry DNA and uh, all of that. It, uh, the next future scope is, uh, you know, visualizing your data. Like, right. Yeah. That's Thank all. you very much. Thank you. Hi. Um, so I've got a question for you in terms of the the practicalities of building a system like this. Okay. Um, GraphQL is well documented and they've got its APIs. Open AP, uh, uh, OAuth is documented, has its APIs. But the actual mechanics of trying to get one to talk to the other and making all the pieces fit together can be complicated. Do you have any tips or suggestions for someone trying to debug why their big system like this isn't working? Any tools or tips or tricks that were useful to you building this system? OK. Uh, uh, a lot of my friends reached out to me. I used, uh, like, Stack Overflow was my home that time because <laughs> uh, I had to deal with a lot of, uh, you know, errors. There was a simple error, like all of the, that stuff was working all good and fine, but uh, suddenly the data wasn't showing. So uh, I just had to, you know, uh, there was this tags, uh, so I just had to give uh, GitHub tag. So that's, uh, that's, what, uh, that's all I had to do. There may be minor errors, there may be major errors, but uh, it's better if you reach out and, you know, to forums. I don't know whether that answers your questions or not. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, thank you for your talk. Hi. Um, I had a question about, uh, you mentioned for, as part of the Open Human Project, uh, you need to, with a certain number of requests that you can make before you get rate limited, you need to uh, figure out uh, timely updates versus uh, bringing in new records. So if you're only working with, a thousand, if you have millions of records, but you only have 1,000 API calls per minute, how do you decide how many of those are going to be uh, bringing in new records versus how many, uh, trying to check and confirm that your historical records are still up to date? Um, I think GraphQL provides everything in a single API call, so, uh, so that pretty much worked for me, but I don't know whether uh, uh, I didn't have a chance to explore the limits. Uh, thanks for the question. Cool. Thank you. Uh, there is a question from the internet. Okay. If there are any high profile uh, GraphQL API providers apart from GitHub? Uh, hi, hi like, what? are there any great, uh, most APIs tend to be REST APIs or XML stuff. Um, if there are any other uh, GraphQL APIs that you're aware of that are rather large okay, apart uh, from GitHub? I think there's a Twitter thing as well. I was uh, really lucky to find a GraphQL cohort for uh, the REST API of GitHub, so. I think it's pretty, uh, pretty much difficult if there is no documentation for uh, GraphQL APIs of different data sources, uh, but I was lucky to find the GitHub uh, cohort. So. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you all for bearing with me. <laughs> Any other questions? That was awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs>